Hello guys and welcome to another episode of Piper's Cup of Nations Adventure and uh, today he's up against R26 of the Immortals of War Clan and we have yet another barbarian faction uh, first it was Gaul, then Spain and now Germania so uh, so far the barbarians don't have a very good track record against the Solicids but we'll see what happens here and uh, the Denari for this battle is 13.5k and only 4 chariots max for the Seleucids, while uh, Germania has 15.5k. Um, so, I would get the battle started, but I want to run through the builds. Um, we have side chariot here, 2, 3, so he's brought the maximum side chariots, which is 4 in the Cup of Nations rules. Um, he's got 2 militia cav here, and 2 cataphracts which are pretty well upgraded, looks like they're gold gold. Two silver shield legionaries, maybe gold attack actually, not too sure on that, but wouldn't be surprised if they're gold attack, um, and I'll explain why in a bit. A lot of archers here and a lot of peltists as well, and it's uh, and uh, here R26 has gone for a couple of spear warband, four of those, uh, six of those actually, so he's brought a lot of spear warband and they are Decently upgraded, most of the, most of them. I think they're gold, gold. Yeah, that's, pr that's pretty good upgrades for spear warband. Um, and six chosen arch warband. And uh, but uh, he's had to sacrifice that for only four barbarian cav. And I'll get the battle started here. I'd have to say I really love what R26 is trying to do. It's definitely something I would probably have attempted myself. He's got two chosen axemen as well, and two berserkers, which is quite cool to see. But I get the kind of general gist of what he's doing. Generally, Germania is supposed to go the rush route, where you go with a lot of heavy cab, a lot of heavy infantry, and you just try to get that, uh, you just try to kill every single archer and every single missile unit that uh, the Seleucids have uh, while preserving your cav, which is almost impossible to do in a lot of situations, and then you try and box up with these. Um, uh, and then basically use your cab to chase off all the missile units and then you get uh, what re remaining infantry you have boxed up and uh, hope for the best. Um, so I really love actually how he's brought 6 gold gold spear warband because that means when he boxes up at the end he'll have some at least decent, half decent pike defense that'll stop those cataphracts and such chariots in their tracks um, when he gets to that end game scenario. I do question these berserkers a bit and uh, these chosen axemen, but um, he's had to sacrifice a lot of a lot of denarii into these uh, chosen archer warbands as well. So he's only been able to get four barbarian cav. But the reason he's brought these chosen archer warbands is actually a bit for the surprise factor as well. As I pointed out before, Germania is very very highly likely to go the rush route, but because they have these six chosen archer warbands now that are very expensive, and as you can see. He hasn't, R26 hasn't upgraded them because they are so price, pricey. Um, but uh, this means that R26 can actually now try and out skirmish um, Piper here and definitely trying to counter build what he expects Piper to bring. And Piper's brought, brought a build that is very, very good against, that would have been very, very good against uh, a, an all in Germania rush build with a lot, a lot of infantry. Um, and a lot of heavy cav and no and like um, no missiles, but um, yeah, I think R26 has built his army uh, pretty well to try and counter uh, what Piper's got here. Um, these chosen arch warband, as long as they're protected, as long as they're safe, can shoot at these art uh, these regular archers, and they should be able to win um, one on one. So hopefully, for for R26, uh, that I reckon that's his plan and. That seems to be what he's going for. These pikes too do confer quite a good advantage onto Germania compared to other uh, barbarian factions. So for example Gaul as we saw in a previous battle, um, their infantry was just, they had no pikes so when the cab comes charging in they can't do any damage to the cab and there's not that kind of inevitability uh, when, when the chosen swordsman box up for example that um, pikes have when they box up because the pikes can stab things from a distance they don't have to take any damage to deal damage and that's always quite valuable in this game um, 
so we've got Piper here moving some units out there. Piper's pretty much got going to have a lot of control um, over this battle, and um, that's solely because the way R26 has built his army, even though it's very good at, uh, it's going to be pretty good at just sitting here and skirmishing and then boxing up eventually. Um, it's not very mobile, as you can see. It's it's got a ton of archers that has to protect. It's got chosen swordsmen, berserkers, spear war banner, and the only kind of mobile force he has is are these barbarian cav. Um, I think R26 should probably try and um, could probably try and go for a few um, micro plays where he pushes these archers back or and tries to counter them, I guess. And, and tries to kind of get the advantage with his chosen archers that way. But um, it's going to be difficult with these chariots, and these chariots are just going to very quickly run down even light cav. And uh, light cav themselves aren't very, very well statted, so there is a chance that if he only sends one or two at a time, that they get shot to pieces and end up not doing very much. But um, what type has got to really preserve here are his, are his pikes, and what he's Sorry, what, what R26 has got to preserve are his pikes, and what he's got to shoot um, are these enemy archers of Piper here. And Piper's just taking his time, really using the initiative he's got uh, to, to uh, position himself as best he can. Um, with all these uh, side chariots and these cav units, um, which are very, very powerful, um, Piper is going to be able to just position himself wherever he wherever he wants around um, around R26's formation. Looks like the R26 wants to is going for a bit of a push this way. I'm not sure if that's a good move. Um oh, okay. He's he's also getting a few flames into here which is very clever. If these guys run a mock that's that's quite that's going to be great for um, R26 but Unfortunately for him, they don't. Piper gets them away just in time, noticing the flaming arrows coming in. So only maybe one volley actually got there. But R26 now going to break with his game plan. He's going to try and just run down these archers with his cav and with his uh, pikes backing them up. Um, that is going to leave his archers a bit open, um, but he is kind of meld meshing in some pikes and cav as well to try and um, protect them. Uh, some of these pikes also catching um, these cataphracts here. Uh, R26 should really try not to be too greedy and chase after these cataphracts. I think he should really just stick to annihilating um, the the archers he can get and uh, be pretty happy with that. I mean, grabbing grabbing a fat unit of archers there, I think, is pretty good. And uh, unfortunately, one of his one of his barbarian cav gets caught there. Um, that's no good and yeah so it looks like he sacrificed one barbarian cav for one archer but this archer unit is very likely to come back it is quite healthy um, over there so yeah I think R26 just broke with his game plan quite a bit there going for a big push on one side and um, really only having only I think routing one archer unit, this one here, to show for it, but it did come back, um, not surprisingly. So not really worth it there for R26. And in, in addition to that, when you when you run after stuff like that, um, you also kind of open yourself up to a lot of missile fire. So, nothing much has happened uh, since I had to take a call, but nevertheless. Uh, so yeah, another thing that happens when you change, like when you move your formation, your entire thing around is that it opens a lot of the units up to missile fire. So a lot of these pikes, which R26 should be trying to preserve, are just getting shot in the back by missiles whenever they run after like one flank 
Um, the other flanks archers just come in and shoot the backs of those spear war band which are so so valuable or will become so so valuable in the long run and again we're going to probably see some spear war banders hit the dust bite the dust here um, as they again turn their backs onto these archers so as you can see uh, Piper very wisely targeting this spe these spear war band these spear war band are where um, R26 has put most of his money and if you think about it uh, without this be a war band, R26 doesn't have an endgame. Um, it's very unlikely that after all these chosen archers have used their missiles that they can hold off, um, you know, fresh cataphracts and uh, chariots and all that. And uh, he's also got those two legionary legionary cohorts, which I think are gold upgraded, gold attack upgraded. So even if there are a few um, spear war band left. Um, it, it, it's going to be tough to get past those, and those gold attack are probably just for the peel of damage. Um, I think uh, it would be great, and it's great end game for Piper as well. Some some end game for Piper as well, and a lot of these Peltists are also end game units. So as you can see, Piper's keeping the Peltists and the Silver Shield Legionaries well back because what you want to do with those is to get into a situation where your opponent has to box, and then after he's boxed and he can't move, bring those Peltists and those. Uh, still wish all legionaries in and get all the get all those uh, javelins out and that's going to severely damage the remaining chances for R26 to win the game uh, if that happens. So R26 really should be focusing down these archers right now because if he can focus down these archers and get all these archers dead then um, that might force uh, Piper to bring in those peltists and uh, the the silver shield legionaries. But I think Piper's doing a great job. He's just targeting down these Spear Warband whenever they move. Um, and these Spear Warband, as you can see, are having it pretty tough. Uh, and r 26 has gone for the strategy, kind of a push strategy now. He's switched gears a bit. Um, he's trying to go in combination with these Spear Warband and catch these archers, but his moves are just too kind of obvious, if you know what I mean. Like, he's when he moves, he's moving his entire army. And um, so it's not really a surprise for Piper, and he can, you know, run his archers away and position his cataphracts as well. And um, the pikes aren't as fast as the barbarian cav, and because the barbarian cav are so poorly statted, um, they just have to kind of get engaged for the cataphracts for a couple seconds and they rout. So it, it's going to be pretty tough for R26 to do this. Um, and if he wants to do this, his micro has to be really, really, really good and on point. And unfortunately, some more of his cab is just getting caught here. Silver Shield Legionary is getting engaged now on these loose formations via Warband. <laughs> some of these Berserkers are going to come out now and try to do some work um, on these Silver Shield Legionaries. And Berserkers in a big engagement like this is pretty good, but Piper's going to pull out now. Maybe worry of these Berserkers and of all this via Warband pouring in now, um, but uh, these Berserkers might be able to get rid of these Silver Shield Legionaries, but in the process they're going to take a lot of Missile Fire, and so are these Chosen Axemen, and so are these Spear Warband, they're going to take a lot of Missile Fire while in this big clump here. Um, so uh, yeah, I think the, the Berserkers are also going into the, the Peltists and stuff, which is kind of funny, but these Peltists actually kind of counter the Berserkers, because they're not going after the the more important units. Uh, they're just kind of frolicking around in the middle of the Peltists. And uh, I think they got Javelin to death there. So, you notice know, our chariots routed for um, Piper, but he's he still got a few more units. And these cab doing some great work chasing off these Spear Warband units. And um, R26 is now down to four depleted Spear Warband units, one dying unit of Chosen Axemen. Got a lot of chosen archers, but um, that probably isn't enough. And you got to question whether his remaining infantry units are going to be able to protect all these chosen archers because they're so depleted now. Um, and uh, Piper's just using his militia cav really well here, just using hit and run, kind of picking off those small archer units. And um, that's what um, Piper's uh, that that's that's what Piper's going for with his cav. Um, what Piper wants to go after with his archers is the infantry, and the, the, the archers are getting some great angles now on the infantry, doing a lot of work there. 
Piper's cav at this point is probably just so overwhelming that you can just charge into this big blob here and take out a bunch of archers. And that might not even be so bad. Um, that might, might be alright actually. A unit of side chariots just routed here with nine, 9 units, so probably some nice flaming arrow shots, nice flaming arrow micro out from R26 to accomplish that. Um, good to see there, but uh, R26 is in a very tight spot now. Uh, these guys are split up, they're very divided. His spear warband all, all over the place, getting shot left, right, front, center. Um, and uh, as I said, these cataphracts are probably enough on their own to just overwhelm some of these um, clusters of units. But uh, these pelts are now going to be doing a lot of work now that the cab is gone. With the cab, with the barbarian cab from R26 gone, there's no effective counters to these pelts now. And there's no effective counters to Silver Shield Legionary's Pila either. Um, so, although this Silver Shield Legionary gets caught, it, it's still going to do some some work fighting, just fighting here. Um, R26 guys are now really split up, really divided, and it's probably going to be easy pickings for this combination of Light Cab and Cataphrax. Cataphrax is going to get a chosen Arch Warband here. Um, I'm not sure if we'll get, get it to route, but some nice kills there. Um, that's definitely what Piper wants to be targeting with the Cav. Um, and Piper still has these sized chariots, which actually R26's build has made pretty redundant so far. Um, because of the, the high number of pikes and the lack of Cav, these Arch chariots really haven't been able to shine. Uh, in the event R26's went for like the 6th Gothic Cav and like a uh, full on infantry rush build, these Sarth chariots would have been great, but now they're not really doing that much. And uh, gotta gotta give props to R26 for noticing uh, that way to kind of make them redundant. But despite R26's good, nice build, um, R26 is going to go down here, and it is very very clear victory for Piper. I think R26 broke with his game plan um, fairly early in the game, but I think that also comes down a bit to Germania's pikes. The fact that they just aren't very good. Um, the Germanic pikes. Their health is pretty bad, so um, yeah, archer shots, peltists, uh, all that kind of thing, kill them very quickly. So I think even if R26 did win the archer fight, um, the peltists and the mm, the silver shield legionaries might have just been able to finish it off. But um, yeah, I think R26 broke with his broke with his plan quite early on, and that might have hurt his chances in the in the long run. Uh, but also just the units of Germania just don't really work well together. Um, same as with Gaul. So, yeah, unfortunately R26, uh, that's one loss for him, but uh, he obviously is, this is obviously still just the the, the group stages, so he, he probably would play a couple more games to see whether he progressed. But well played to Piper, um, well played game for him, a very convincing win, and uh, I'll see you guys next episode.